Have you ever done something and had an off feeling about it, but nonetheless carried through with it? Probably so, right? So I was cleaning up the files after my last edit, and I formatted a memory card thinking it only contained my last build, the toddler bed. Well, turns out it was also holding the first few clips of the lamp build. It's okay, we didn't miss anything major, but nonetheless not too impressed. To get everyone up to speed, I went shopping at Home Depot to find some inspiration for a build. I found a pendant in the clearance rack that fit the bill. I plan to use that along with some leftover walnut for the frame. So let's jump right into it. I started with a leftover cut from a walnut slab. Using my router, I cut a hole to the depth and roughly to the size of my lamp frame. The chisels were next in line to square out the hole. A 90 degree corner chisel comes in handy for tasks like this. I put up my home right spray shelter. It comes in three sizes. This one is a large. It's nine feet wide and helps to keep the overspray down. I let the paint cure overnight. Now we can pull the tape and make sure the lines are clean. So far, so good. Looks like we can start sanding. Haters will say I missed. I'm sanding the sides with my orbital sander with 220 grit for cleanup. I had already hit these with 180 earlier, as well as added a round over for a clean look. The tape is being applied again as I need to be able to lay the piece on the painted side to sand the front of the frame. The base is sanded with 180 and 220. I switched over to Mirka mesh sanding discs for this project. They seem to last longer by preventing the buildups that you would normally get using some of the solid discs with large holes. These discs seem to do a better job allowing the vac to suck up the would-be airborne dust. These holes will simply serve as the exit for the electrical wire. I'm using Odie's oil for the wood finish. It's a solvent-free, non-toxic wood finish. It contains natural UV inhibitors and is actually food safe. The application is quite simple. You can rub the product in with your hands or whatever your preferred method is, then simply buff it into the wood with a fine scotch pad. I usually start with the gray pad for the first coat and move to the finer white pads. You can actually stop here if you would like, a single coat is the only requirement, but you can get better results with layers and additional buffing. After applying the product, wait 45 minutes to 2 hours, then buff the product completely off using a towel until you can swipe a clean finger across without a smudge. After the first coat of Odie's oil, I apply wood butter, which contains a blend of wax along with the oil. It is applied in the same manner with a white scotch pad. The final coat is with Odie's Wax. It's a clear wax that can be applied as a top coat to give an extra level of sheen and protection. A 4 inch leg bolt along with Gorilla Glue will hold the frame to the base. I actually found bronze eyelets to use in the holes that will serve as wire pass throughs. These were simply super glued and pressed into place. I am also using bronze wire tensioners to hold the shape and tension of the wire that will be strung through the frame. The lamp base originally started out as a kitchen pendant. But with a few minor tweaks and some hardware I had laying around, I was able to make it fit with the design. The wire was a bit snug to initially get through the exit hole, but once the braided wire passed through, it started to move smoothly. The wire will transition up the back, through the middle, and then up over the top before being dropped down.
The wiring was connected using Sapobi solder seal wire connectors. It's a waterproof joint that contains solder in the center. You evenly apply heat and it seals as well as melts the solder. I applied a shrink tube over the top for extra protection. A tensioner is installed on the top of the shade to prevent the weight from pulling on the wire connectors below it. Now I will pull the wire to the desired length and find the proper tension across the top. Well that's it. I think it turned out nice. The black satin paint goes very well with the dark walnut. The bronze accents and the tensioners as well as the eyelets adds a nice contrast as well. I found an interesting LED bulb from Nextglow that is dimmable and matches the design. I will post the products I use below. Thanks for watching and please subscribe so you don't miss the next video.